dear students welcome to my channel learning hub so we are moving ahead with functions so agent of this video is user defined function introduction i have already done in my last video if you have not seen my last video please watch it that that contains the basics of function so and what are arguments parameters i'll be covering in this video so we are going to start with the function so initially uh, in my previous video, I explained how to find factorial of a number through the argument, through uh, functions. So, if we are, suppose if we want to add two numbers, if we are writing here sum x is equal to int input, enter number, After that, suppose I have written y is equal to x plus 2 and print y. Now here in this case, I have to, now if I want to call it, I will simply call using blank parenthesis. Suppose I want to uh, send a number, send a number from here while calling a function only i want to send any number and then uh, i have to calculate the sum or do the factorial or whatever we feel like so in that case suppose i want to send five here so something should be there to catch this number so we have to write any variable here this variable when we will call this function this variable will go to this value now in this case we will not use this x this is the local variable of sum means this variable sum if if we are using x here so we cannot access we, uh, we will not be able to access this x here this is the local variable of this particular function only so we can send it send a value this this value which we are sending is known as argument and the value this x will be known as parameter so values being sent is known as argument value being received is known as parameter argument can be a literal may it be string suppose ss may it be a number may it be a float value or anything so it can be a literal it can be a variable it means instead of 5 i can also write here y and y is defined somewhere else here suppose we can send a variable or we can send an expression expression means here we can write y plus 2 also so Whatever the value is, suppose y is 2 and in this case plus 2 is 4. So, x will contain 4 here. So, argument as an argument, we can send in literal, we can send variable, we can send expression. Anything we can send. So, value being sent is known as argument and value being received is known as parameter. So, I will just show a small program to demonstrate how argument and parameter works. So, these are the different types of arguments. So, first one is positional argument. In positional argument, suppose I have a function sum we are sending. See, we can have multiple arguments and we can have multiple parameters. So, we have, this is a simple program. This will find, this is a function which will find the sum. So, if we want to call this function, we have to write Number of arguments should always match number of parameters. It, it is not possible if we are writing here only 3. That is we are passing one argument and we are trying to accept 2 parameters. In that case it will generate an error. So number of parameters so should always match number of argument should always match number of parameters. So this is positional argument. See suppose I want to find... Uh, pre, uh, in simple interest that is P R T uh, we have to send and I will be P into 
R into T divided by 100 and print I. So, if we want to calculate um, simple interest, the position of means principal we have to send here only, rate should be here only and time. So, the position of the um, all the arguments and parameters matters. So, this that is why this is known as positional argument. Then comes default argument. Suppose we are not sending the value of t. Default means if we are not sending the value, it should take this value. This is default. See, in this case, if we are sending this, if we are calling it, suppose interest, this is interest, I am calling it. So, 1000 will go here. This 2 will go here and this 3. We have already written t is equal to 2. That will be overwritten. So, the t will become now 3 and interest will be calculated as 1000 into 2 into 3 divided by 100. In this way, it will be calculated. Suppose I have again made a call and I have not sent the third Argu third argument. In that case, this will go here 1000, R will contain 2 and T because I have not specified default argument, default value will be taken and T will be considered as 2. So, these are known as default argument. But you have to take care, your default argument, default parameter should be specified only after positional parameters. If we are writing, suppose, if we are writing like T is equal to 1, P and R, so this is wrong. This will generate an error. This should be at the last. So, um, we will cover keyword argument, variable argument in my next, I will cover it in my next video. And uh, these two, this default positional I'll demonstrate on my laptop now. So this is the small program which uh, which is for demonstrating positional arguments. So this is the function definition. The execution will not start from here. The execution will start from main. This is the main program. This is the main program. The program will start from here. When we will run the program, it will ask input from the user, principal rate and time. And then function call is made. When the function call is made, after that, the flow of control will go to this line. So whatever it is there in P, it will be stored in principal. Whatever is there in R, it will be stored in rate. And whatever is there in T, it will be stored in time. So Finally, this is the formula of calculating amount using compound interest and finally the interest can be calculated and then it is printed. So, I will run this program function f5 principal suppose 5000 <coughs> rate suppose 2% rate time suppose 2 years. So, you can see amount and interest is calculated. Now, when we are using positional arguments, the sequence of arguments matter. Position means the position of argument matters. If suppose we are writing here P, in that case, the, in that case, the answer will differ. Function F5. Suppose 2500. Rate suppose 2% and time suppose 2% again. You can see that the amount and rate. You can see the difference. Or I'll take the same. I'll take the same values. Function F5. Principal. I'll take same 5000. Rate 2 and time 2. Now you can see the difference. This is the amount calculated and this is the amount. The values are same. But here the position is different.
that is why the value will change hence the position matters secondly if i am missing one argument in that case also it will generate an error because there are two arguments and there are three parameters an argument and parameter doesn't match in that case it will generate an error suppose principal rate time you can see here missing one required positional argument time because here in this case the time is not there we are sending two argument t will go to principal p will go to rate and time is not getting anything so it will generate an error next thing is default arguments default arguments as you can see here default arguments we are using here the program will start executing from here without default parameter means we are sending the argument we are sending the argument here x we are sending take we are taking input from the user suppose i'll run this program first 5 i am sending so you can see factorial is 120 how it happen see first of all it will print without default parameter you can see the output without default parameter when the second line when i execute it will take input from the user which i have given 5 then it will make a function call this is a function call now x will go here already x have value 5 that will be overwritten so when it is overwritten suppose i have sent 5 4 or whatever according to that factorial will be calculated and displayed next when we are using default parameter it means we are not sending something when we are not sending the default value will be considered so x will be considered as 5 5 and then factorial will be calculated i again i'll show you the output function f5 suppose i am entering the number 8 so it will calculate the factorial of 8 and then factorial of 5 see factorial of 8 is this factorial of 5 is this in this way it will be calculated another thing is f which we are using is a local variable of factorial if we are trying to use this local variable in the main program see what happens right you can see f is not defined this is the error because that is a local variable of local variable of this function it can be used only within the function it is not a global variable so the scope of local variable is within this function it will not be access outside this function so my dear students i hope you understood the concept if you like this video please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon thank you and have a nice day ahead